Hey, welcome to a new video. Alligators are among the most terrifying creatures in the world. If an alligator is chasing you and you think you can escape by climbing a tree, you'd be wrong. They can even jump to your location, and they're surprisingly agile for their size, especially when it comes to jumping. Additionally, they can jump both in water and on land, although their jump height varies depending on the situation. When hunting, alligators can launch themselves out of the water with impressive force. They've been observed jumping 8 feet high from the water to catch low-flying birds or other prey. This ability is made possible by their powerful tails, which they use to propel themselves upward. On land, they can also jump, but their jumps are generally lower than in the water. However, there have been reports that Cuban alligators can jump up to 5 feet high on land. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. While some tourists were enjoying their time by the river, something unusual happened. A strange figure emerged beneath the water's surface. The bizarre shape and eerie presence held their gaze, as if they couldn't look away. Driven by curiosity, they decided to investigate further. To their surprise, the mysterious figure turned out to be a real mermaid. However, some people believe that the mermaid was a sculpture, detailed and lifelike. The tourists were overcome with a sense of wonder. While some believe it's a real mermaid due to the inhuman way she swims, others think it's just a person in a mermaid costume. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. A large crowd gathered to view this strange creature in a thigh river, but you can only see a small part of it sticking out of the water before it submerged again. For more than two minutes, this unknown creature was observed. Some claim that, although you can only see a small part of it, this is clearly a fish of a gigantic proportion, if not a real dragon. In Thai mythology, the concept of dragons is often associated with the Naga, a semi-serpent-like being depicted in various forms in art and literature. The Naga is believed to inhabit rivers, particularly the Mekong River, which flows through northeastern Thailand. According to legend, the Mekong River was created by two Naga kings, who had slithered through the area, forming the river. This association with water symbolizes the Naga's role as a guardian of rivers and a bringer of rain, making it an important figure in agricultural communities dependent on water for their crops. One of the most fascinating aspects of Naga mythology is the phenomenon of Naga fireballs, where mysterious fireballs are said to rise from the Mekong River during certain times of the year. Local residents believe these fireballs are manifestations of the Naga showing its supernatural powers. This has to be one of the signs of the apocalypse, right? It looks terrifying and sounds that way too. Imagine being stuck in the water while this happens. In December 2015, thousands of fish washed up on a shore in eastern Lahad Darussaba, sparking speculation about what this might mean as an omen. Villagers rushed to gather the fish, locally known as Tamban. While opinions were divided on whether this was a sign of good luck or bad, some cooked the fish, while others collected them to transport to Lahad Daru and surrounding districts for sale. One of the main reasons of the mass fish deaths is low oxygen levels in the water. When the water becomes oxygen deprived, often due to factors such as warm temperatures or pollution, fish can suffocate and wash ashore as they try to survive. This situation can lead to a perfect storm, where large schools of fish are stranded on land. Sudden changes in the water's temperature can also stress the fish. For example, if fish migrate to warmer water with less oxygen, they may become disoriented and more vulnerable to stress. Shiva Lingas are symbolic representations of the Hindu god Shiva and are often worshipped in temples and sacred places. In Karnataka, one of the most notable locations associated with Shiva Lingas is Sahar Shwalinga, along the banks of Shama River. It's known for the approximately 1,000 carved Shiva Lingas found on the rocks along the riverbed. This pilgrimage site is about 8.7 miles from Circe and is particularly famous for its unique location, where the Lingas are partially submerged during the monsoon season, but become visible when the water level drops. The origin of these carvings is shrouded in local legend. One story suggests that a king seeking blessings for children had these Lingas carved as a votive offering. Another tale involves the character Bahim, who supposedly dropped his hair during his journey, which transformed into Lingas. This place isn't only for worship, but also an important cultural monument. It attracts thousands of devotees, especially during festivals and it becomes a center of celebrations. In a daring prank, a YouTuber decided to release a remote-controlled crocodile head into a local river, leading to a scene that was both chaotic and hilarious. As the sun shone brightly, families and friends gathered by the water, unaware of the surprise lurking beneath the surface. With the push of a button, the prankster maneuvered the lifelike crocodile head through the water, its menacing jaws snapping and eyes glinting in the sunlight. The unsuspecting swimmers had barely any time to register this bizarre sight before panicking. Screams filled the air and some swimmers fled the river, wildly splashing in their attempt to escape what they thought was a real croc. But not everyone fled immediately. Some tried to confront the crocodile by throwing whatever they could at it. The prankster revealed in the chaos as he guided the crocodile head among the people, and even those canoeing nearby were startled out of their wits. 
The Nonsemon Ghost Fleet refers to a collection of abandoned ships in Nonsemon River in Suffolk, Virginia. This intriguing site has drawn the attention of archaeologists and historians due to its historical significance and the stories it tells about the region's maritime past. The ghost fleet came to light when local history enthusiast Kermit Hobbs discovered remnants of boats sticking out of the mud in this river. This discovery occurred during an exceptionally low tide, revealing more than a dozen ships, some dating back to the American Civil War and World War I. The ships in the ghost fleet ranged in size from 50 to 100 feet and represent a time when Suffolk was a thriving maritime port. The region was known for its oyster industry, where fresh oysters were packed and shipped into distant markets. Archaeologists have identified at least 13 ships so far, and ongoing research is focused on reconstructing the historical context of these vessels and their role in the local economy. Have you ever seen a, let's say, a fish like this? How would you react if they suddenly swam towards you? However, this isn't an alien species or a mutated fish. It could be an albino softshell turtle. Leucistic softshell turtles are a rare variation of softshell turtles, characterized by a partial loss of pigmentation, resulting in a pale or white appearance. Unlike albino turtles, which lack pigmentation entirely and often had red or pink eyes, these turtles retain some pigmentation, especially in their eyes. This unique shell structure allows them to swim more agilely. These turtles are known for their leathery rather than hard, bony shells. These unique shell structures allow them to swim better, which is useful in muddy environments. In 2015, scientists discovered a 2,624-year-old bald cypress tree. It was in a swamp in the Black River in North Carolina. This makes it one of the oldest known non-clonal sexual reproducing trees in the world and the oldest wetland tree species globally. The discovery was part of a broader study led by Dr. David Stahl of the University of Arkansas, focused on understanding the lifespan of bald cypress trees in the region. Researchers took core samples from various trees without damaging them and it revealed that this particular tree had been living since around 400 BC, long before the birth of Christ. This is either the Loch Ness Monster or some sort of dragon, because let's be honest, no fish is looking like that. This is either the Loch Ness Monster or some sort of dragon, because let's be honest, no fish looks like that. A Reddit user captured the photo with their phone camera in July 2023. The mysterious monster appeared to be a reptilian-like creature emerging from the River Thames sparking a wave of speculation among fellow users. This creature was spotted a few hundred miles south of Scotland, leading to all sorts of imaginative theories. One user joked, it's the famous Thames Anaconda, while others dubbed the creature the Loch Thames Monster. Some even went as far as to claim that this user had spotted Godzilla in the river. The mystery was further fueled by the discovery of a massive snakeskin about five feet long, found in the Thames the previous year. This scaly remnant was believed to belong to a boa constrictor, which may have escaped or been abandoned by its owner. Given these findings, the idea of a reptilian creature lurking in the water doesn't seem so far-fetched to some. In the depths of a murky swamp where the water whispers secrets and the trees are sentinels, an unexpected discovery surfaced. Amidst the tangled roots and floating debris, a peculiar sight caught the attention of those brave enough to venture into the untamed realm. There, nestled in the mud and darkness, lay the swamp monster Elmo. Well, not really a monster, just a puppet. But it had undergone a transformative journey, its once vibrant red fur now marred by the murky waters of the swamp. But how did this beloved children's toy end up in such an unusual and inhospitable environment? The answer remains shrouded in uncertainty, leaving room for imagination and speculation. Perhaps a kid lost the puppet during a walk in the area. How do you think Elmo ended up here? Let me know in the comments. Lungfish live mainly in the waters of Africa and Australia, and they can grow to be about 6 feet, 6 inches, or 2 meters in length. In Australia, it's illegal to fish on them, but if you want to get close to them, you have to be followed by a research team. This fish, like other predators, has huge teeth. The reason they are called lungfish is because they can breathe oxygen from the air, just like land animals do. Do you believe mermaids exist? It's interesting to think about, and many legends and stories from almost every culture have reported mermaids. But unfortunately, it's never been scientifically proven that they actually exist. Some people think that various mysterious creatures, including mermaids, have been hiding from humans somewhere. In this next video, we see a mermaid emerge from the water. Could this be proof that mermaids actually exist, or was this something else that emerged from the water? Unfortunately, the quality of this video isn't too good, but whatever it is, it looks pretty creepy. Archaeologists in China have made an extraordinary discovery at the confluence of the Minjiang and Jinjiang rivers, located approximately 31 miles or 50 miles south of Chengdu. 
Deeply buried beneath the riverbed for over three centuries is a monumental treasure trove, consisting of more than 10,000 artifacts from the Ming Dynasty. This remarkable collection, featuring a diverse range of gold, silver, and bronze coins, bears witness to the bygone era. The significance of this find cannot be overstated. The existence of such an extensive treasure, carefully concealed beneath the depths of the river, offers a tantalizing glimpse into ancient China. These artifacts, dating back 300 years, provide a tangible connection to a period steeped in history and cultural richness. Within this remarkable assemblage, the glittering gold and silver coins take center stage. These precious pieces, showcasing the intricate craftsmanship of the Ming Dynasty, serve as a testament to the economic prosperity and trade networks of the time. If you see this picture, you would think that another creepy creature was found in a swamp. But don't worry, this is just a sculpture made by Sophie Prestigakamo. The sculptor made swamp creatures to show men's dialogue with nature, and you can admire them in the nature reserve of the Sene Marshes in the Gulf of Moribian in France. She started by crafting two creatures, but they ended up being eight of them. The creatures are made of mud and seaweed, and they look pretty creepy. Interestingly, many details change over time, including their skin, textures, and colors, as well as the landscapes in which they live. Earlier, we talked about a fish that could walk on land, but now we're going to talk about an unusual spider that can breathe underwater. Meet the diving spider, or better known as the water spider, the only spider species that can survive underwater for a long time. The water spider makes a web and then hangs it on the water's surface between some water plants. The water spiders then come out of the water only to refuel their oxygen supply. Initially, scientists thought they would often surface every 20 to 40 minutes, but it turned out that the water spider could last 24 hours in the water before coming up to get oxygen. This, of course, is a great advantage against the spider's many predators. The legendary city of Dwarka is said to have been founded by Krishna, an important god in the Hindu religion. The city was also considered to be just a legend. But that was until it was allegedly discovered in 1963, which can completely change history. Originally, historians thought civilization in India existed about 3,000 to 6,000 years ago. But the sunken city of Dwarka brings this date back to as much as 9,000 to 15,000 years ago. Dwarka is said to have consisted of 900,000 royal palaces, all made of silver, adorned with expensive jewels and crystals. Later, a group of students accidentally found entire roads and high sandstone walls under the water. They also found copper coins dating back 9,500 years. What could have happened to this legendary city that it just sank? And why is it thought that this lost city is only fictional? What do you think? This mysterious video was uploaded by a user named Kano Malarkey. In the description, he says that he was filming when they were fishing at Low Foil, a lake connected to the Atlantic Ocean and border between Ireland and the United Kingdom. As you can see, some kind of sea monster comes to the surface and swims past the two boats at quite a pace. If this is a head, it should mean that the monster would have been huge. People in the comments say it looks like a huge prehistoric sea turtle. Another person in the comments says that he's seen the exact same thing several years ago, but no one believed him. Connell says it might have been a whale, but his friend in the boat across from him could see it better and said it didn't look like a whale. So what could it have been? Is it fake? Is it a giant sea monster? What do you think? Elliot Fuller from Germantown and his friend, Jason Franklin, had an extraordinary encounter while canoeing. They were in a creek between Richardson Lake and Zarling Lake near Wabano Forest County when they came across a remarkable sight, an artificial leg protruding from a beaver dam. Their curiosity was piqued, and they conducted an online search, discovering a Craigslist post from 20 days earlier seeking a lost artificial leg. The owner, Mark Warner, a 49-year-old man from Green Bay, unfortunately lost his leg during a fishing trip when his canoe capsized in the river. Elliot and Jason found it about three miles or five kilometers away from where Mark had lost his artificial leg. With a sense of goodwill, they contacted the man and promptly returned the artificial leg. In appreciation for their kind deed, they were rewarded 50 bucks. Jason modestly remarked that he hoped that if he ever lost his leg, someone would show him the same courtesy. The Black Cayman belongs to the crocodile family and is considered one of the largest members of the alligator family. They live in the Amazon River Basin, and they can reach about 4 meters in length. They are called Black Cayman because of the color on their skin, and you can see them mainly at night because they are nocturnal predators. In this video, we can see them catching a huge Black Cayman that was almost 13 feet or 4 meters long. Most people believe that aliens live in space, and if they ever decide to show themselves, they'll probably do so from the sky. 
But have you ever thought that this might be a false assumption and that aliens can actually live underwater? This theory isn't very popular, but after watching this video, you'll probably change your mind. The video was taken deep underwater, and the person who filmed it assumes that he found a strange colony of living organisms. The person even claims that to him it looked like a miniature city made by aliens, and that one day they'll be ready to attack our planet from the water. We've only explored 5% of our waters, so who knows? Maybe there's aliens living deep in the water and we have no idea. Do you believe this? The Hanford site is known as one of the most contaminated places in the Western Hemisphere due to the large-scale release of radioactive substances. This site, located in the state of Washington in the United States, is notorious for its association with the production of plutonium during the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was a top-secret research effort by the U.S. government during World War II. The location was chosen for its remote setting and proximity to the Columbia River, which served as a water source for the production process. During its operation from the 1940s to the 1980s, Honford produced vast quantities of plutonium for nuclear weapons. However, the production process generated significant amounts of radioactive waste, which was stored in underground tanks near the river. Unfortunately, inadequate waste management practices led to the leakage and seepage of radioactive materials into the soil and groundwater, including the Columbia River. Cleanup efforts at Honford have taken many years and are considered one of the world's largest and most complex environmental remediation projects. The Great Dismal Swamp is covered in a sucking mud puddle and is said to have saved thousands of people who escaped to live there in freedom. History takes us back to the early 1600s, when Native Americans were trying to flee the colonial frontier. The archaeologists found evidence that the people lived there, and they didn't even have much to fear from the outside world until the 19th century. That's when the swamp communities emerged that were dominated by Africans and African Americans from about 1680 until the Civil War. Today, the Great Dismal Swamp has been reduced and is managed as a federal wildlife refuge. Of course, most traces of the slaves have disappeared, and today only animals and birds live there. Of course, it's very difficult to imagine that humans somehow lived there, but it's an important part of history. Jeremy Wade, there he is again. He's one of the most popular fishermen on YouTube, and in this video, he managed to catch another river monster, the sturgeon. This fish can reach a length of 11 feet, 5 inches, or 3.5 meters. But did you know that they can get much bigger? The largest sturgeon ever caught in history was 23 feet, 7 inches, or 7.2 meters in length, with a weight of 3,463 pounds, or 1,571 kilograms. This fish was caught in the Volga Delta. A man was taking a walk on the banks of the Thames in London one day, when he suddenly saw a cannonball lying on the bank. When he pulled the object out of the river, it seemed to have a chain attached to it. Archaeologists examined the object and figured out that it was 300 years old and that it used to be used on prisoners. So they think that a prisoner might have escaped and the object somehow ended up in the river. Because it was found near a place full of black mud, experts say that it's been well preserved over the years. The mud would have protected the metal and the ball from wear and tear. Still, a pretty creepy discovery because who knows how many people this object has been used on. If you'd like to see this object up close, you could travel to London, where it's exhibited in the Docklands Museum. About 55 years ago, a man rescued a pilot from a plane that ended up in the water in the Bay of Bengal in India. More than five decades later, the man's grandson found the stolen plane that the pilot was flying. He had been looking for this wreckage since 2010, but with the help of other divers, he managed to find the location. The man who piloted the plane was the first Indian man to manage to land the Seahawk single-seater plane on the water. Unfortunately, the plane sank, and for many years it couldn't be found. Until 55 years later, it was found again by his own grandson. In my opinion, it's pretty incredible to find a plane at the bottom of the ocean with such a backstory. Don't you think? This video is believed to have been recorded during the 2004 tsunami in Japan. A small snippet of the original video was uploaded on October 3rd, 2014, asking people what's seen here. Here we see the strange ghostly creature jump out of the water, and then it appears to climb up a house. There are several options. Option one would be that it's the spirit of someone or something. Option two is that it's some kind of gas from a gas tank, while others say that the way it moves is impossible. And option three is that this is a mysterious Japanese mythical sea monster called the Ningen. I honestly have no idea. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. An adventurous duo of divers, Derek Demeter and Henry Sadler, made an astonishing discovery on May 2nd, 2021. 
Submerged in the depths of the Peace River at Acadia, Florida, they found a colossal femur bone from a mammoth, measuring approximately 4 feet or 1.2 meters long, and weighing an impressive 51 pounds or 23 kilograms. These intrepid friends regularly explore the waters of southwest Florida and have previously come across mammoth teeth in the river. On that particular day, in addition to the mammoth femur, they also found several small fossils of extinct sharks and even a tooth from a saber-toothed cat. Encased in a sandy sediment layer, the exact age of the mammoth bone remains uncertain. However, during the last ice age, Colombian mammoths roamed as far south as Costa Rica. Remarkably, in 2011, scientists confirmed the discovery of mammoth bones approximately 13,000 years old in Vero Beach, southeast Florida. The Colombian mammoths likely emerged through hybridization between a woolly mammoth and an unknown lineage of mammoths that migrated to North America from Siberia around 1.5 million years ago. The recently discovered bone is a femur from a mammoth, indicating that the associated creature could have been as tall as 7 foot 4 inches, or 2.25 meters, and weighed an astonishing 22,000 pounds or 10,000 kilograms. If you ever want to catch an electric eel, you need some serious equipment. From rubber gloves to rubber boots, you probably know that this creature is dangerous and it can hit you with electricity, so you have to be super careful with electric eels. In this other video, we can see Jeremy Wade catching another eel species, the Anguala murmurata. These fish can also reach a gigantic length. A video of an unknown creature was taken near the Tetrov River in northern Ukraine, and it scared the hell out of the internet. The video shows something that looks a bit like a reptile with huge jagged teeth. The beast is half underwater, and the creator of the video is terrified, but he tries to get as close to the monster as possible by waving a fish rod in front of its face. At first, the beast ignores the man, but then unpredictably jumps back into the water. When this video was posted on the internet, many people assume that the creature is a mutant, affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986. They think that the creature was a result of the disaster and was poisoned by the Tetrov River. However, there were also people who found nothing special about the mysterious creature, and they even said it looked more like an old shoe. As if crocodiles weren't terrifying enough. Could you imagine them having horns? That's what you see being unearthed from a river in Madagascar. Foe, better known as the horned crocodile, was a top predator terrorizing other animal populations millions of years ago, living in the rivers and swamps. This remarkable creature existed during the late Cretaceous period and had unique adaptations that set it apart from its modern relatives. One of the most striking features of Oe was its large horn-like protrusions on top of its skull. These bony structures, several inches or centimeters long, gave the crocodile its distinctive name. It's believed that these horns may have had a function in display or territorial marking, similar to the antlers of modern-day deer. With an estimated length of up to 16.5 feet or 5 meters, Voe were a formidable predator. Its long, slender snout was equipped with sharp, interlocking teeth, allowing it to effectively capture and devour prey. Fossil evidence suggests it primarily fed on fish and small aquatic animals, using its powerful jaws and agile body to navigate through the water. What comes to mind when you look at this picture? Is it a person? Is it an animal? Or some unknown creepy creature? A 15-year-old girl is said to have encountered this creature in the swamps somewhere in Brazil. When she took the photo, she didn't understand at first what exactly she was seeing, but when she realized that it's a humanoid creature, she was quite shocked. As we can see, it has a creepy face with two horns. It's hard to say if this creature lives in the swamps, but people gave it the name the Bahia Horned Beast. However, it's still unknown what or who this exactly is. But this was not the only time a creepy creature had been seen in a swamp. In this photo, we see another creature that was photographed somewhere in a swamp. What could this be? This creature also has horns, but it looks a little different. Maybe these two monsters are the swamp monsters that people talk about in the legends. Bull sharks are considered one of the most dangerous sharks and prefer to live in shallow coastal waters, which means they can often encounter people. But these sharks have developed an ability to live in fresh water as well, which means they can end up in rivers. In this video, we can see how they manage to catch a bull shark measuring a whopping 10 feet, or 3 meters. Everybody likes to swim. Some do it in water parks, but others like to do it in the ocean or rivers. But the question is, is this really a smart thing to do in rivers? If we're to believe the 15-year-old girl named Kali Hardig from Arkansas, it's not. When she was 12 years old, she decided to go swimming one summer day with some friends near their house at a nearby river. When she got home, she told her mother that she had a headache. At first, they thought it might be because of the hot sun. What they didn't know at the time was that the girl had become infected with a brain-eating amoeba. 
The Nigleria fowli, as the amoeba is also called, usually enters the nose and then makes its way to the brain. Here it inflicts tremendous damage and you can even die from it. Fortunately, such a case is very rare and the girl was one of the lucky ones who survived the incident. The locals don't want to go near it, but a group of underwater archaeologists took a chance and investigated a sinkhole in the south of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Their findings were pretty creepy. It turns out that this underwater cave, known as Sakoyayam, is cursed and littered with elongated skulls. For centuries, the legends and mysteries surrounding the strange cave were enough to keep the locals away. The ancient residents believed that a giant snake with a horse's head guarded the entrance. According to many, the underwater cave was said to harbor an evil energy. Other people believe that the entrance to the Mayan underworld is here and that it's home to the gods. I must say that the divers were very brave to explore this place, because some of the tunnels are so narrow that they can hardly even pass through with their oxygen tanks. In October 2018, videos were released of a sea monster they named Headless Chicken Monster. This strange sea monster is said to have been first seen by scientists in 2017 in the Gulf of Mexico. But in 2018, they encountered this sea creature again in a southern ocean. Rather little is known about the animal, but it's said to be a type of sea cucumber. This strange looking creature was reportedly observed at a depth of 3 kilometers, where the ocean is very dark. Articles call this sea creature a headless chicken, and it's been filmed by new technologies so that scientists are able to admire deep underwater life in this way. Videos like this make me wonder how many other unusual sea creatures might be there that we don't know about. The ocean floor has only been explored by 1%, so who knows what sea monsters are still waiting to be discovered. The rivers of Indonesia are known for their significant crocodile populations, especially the saltwater crocodile. These reptiles are the largest living species of crocodile. The extensive river systems, wetlands, and coastal areas of the country provide an ideal habitat for these creatures. Hence videos like this one where they swarm boats like ants. Saltwater crocodiles in Indonesia can be highly aggressive and territorial. The large populations of crocodiles in Indonesian rivers are a result of the country's vast and diverse ecosystem. With extensive river networks and abundant prey, they find sources of food in the form of fish, turtles, birds, and mammals that inhabit these waterways. Additionally, the warm tropical climate and the presence of suitable nesting sites along riverbanks provide favorable conditions for crocodile reproduction and population growth. They also have a reputation for being one of the most dangerous and aggressive crocodile species, known for attacking a wide range of animals. They have powerful jaws with sharp teeth, allowing them to easily seize and overpower their prey, even larger mammals. Furthermore, they're opportunistic hunters and have been observed ambushing their victims from the water's edge or launching surprise attacks from the water. The snakehead fish can grow to about 2 to 3 feet, or 60 to 90 centimeters. But what makes it dangerous is that it can become super aggressive towards people, especially if you get too close to their eggs or their young. Another interesting fact is that the snakehead fish is an invasive species that can move itself over land. So it can happen that the fish ends up in another river, after which it eats everything in its path. The perch is probably one of the most popular fish you can catch in rivers. But have you ever heard of the Nile perch? This fish can grow up to 6 feet, or 1.8 meters long, and weigh up to 330 pounds, or 150 kilograms. It's not easy to catch this fish, and another problem is that the fish lives in dangerous waters. However, most of them are caught before they can get this big. We all know that sloths are super lazy and that they're also very slow. But have you ever seen a sloth swimming? You'll be extremely surprised, but the sloth in this video managed to get into the water. Slowly but surely, as we've come to expect from sloths. It took him about a minute to crawl from a bush to the water. But he did it. Sloths are incredibly cute creatures, but did you know that they're much faster in the water than on land? According to various studies, they are three times faster in the water. However, they don't like to stay in the water for too long, so after freshening up, the sloth decides to get out of the water again. Thanks to their long arms, they can swim very easily in a fast pace. To be honest, the sloth looks a little creepy when it climbs back out of the water all wet. Don't you think so? A train was en route from Wichita, Kansas to Renton, Washington, carrying airplanes destined for assembly at Boeing's factory. However, the train derailed near the town of Alberton on March 3, 2014. As the train negotiated a curve in the track, a mechanical failure caused multiple rail cars to derail. With the force of the derailment, the rail cars carrying Boeing 737 planes ended up in the Clark Fork River. Scattered along the river and its banks were disassembled airplane parts. 
including fuselage sections, wings, and engines. The airplanes were in various stages of assembly, with some parts still packaged and others partially constructed. The incident was notable due to the size and weight of the disassembled planes each weighing several thousands of pounds or kilograms. Emergency response teams, including local authorities and environmental agencies, quickly responded to the situation. Cranes and other heavy equipment were used to carefully lift parts out of the water and onto the riverbanks. Fortunately, there were no reported injuries or fatalities as a result of this incident. The area where the derailment occurred was largely rural and sparsely populated. However, the incident did cause significant disruption to train services in the region. This lasted for several days, as damaged tracks had to be repaired and debris cleared. Papua New Guinea is a country in Oceania that covers an incredible 463,000 square kilometers. It's known for its many indigenous tribes that live there and the forested areas that have not been fully explored yet. Many poor people live there, and gangs also make it dangerous to go anywhere at night. This country's also ended up in air battles in World War II. Papua New Guinea eventually became something of a hunting ground for warbird enthusiasts, and many people found several missing plane wrecks there. One of the most famous finds was a plane called Swamp Ghost. In 1942, the plane was dumped in the Agambo Swamp because it ran out of fuel during one of its bombing missions. Until 2006, the plane remained there virtually untouched, but it was eventually taken apart and disposed of by the Americans. The alligator turtle is not only the largest freshwater turtle in the world, it also looks scary. This turtle is also found in rivers and can weigh up to 250 pounds or 115 kilograms. It's a prehistoric animal that can be dangerous because if you are not careful, it has an enormous biting power with which it could easily bite off your fingers. In this video, we see a man who catches the alligator turtle with his bare hands. When you first see this picture, you might think that a person has been turned to stone in the middle of a river. Fortunately, that's not the case. It's just a statue. The statue is said to be one of the most terrifying statues you can find in Ireland. It was created by a German man named Victor Langheld, and it can be found in the town of Wicklow. The idea behind the statue is supposed to show that people desperately work towards their goals, even if that would lead to a burnout. The area where the statue is situated would not be so suitable for families with children, because it's on private property and you can't go there. In addition to this statue, Victor is also known for creating other statues that are supposedly for meditation purposes. Pavlo Petri is a 5,000-year-old city completely underwater, off the coast of southern Laconia in Peloponnese, Greece. It was rediscovered in the 1960s and is known as the oldest underwater city in the Mediterranean. But it's also one of the oldest lost cities inhabited during the Bronze Age. Not only that, but Pavlo Petri predates Plato's lost city of Atlantis. It's also said to have been a trading center for ancient civilizations, such as the Minoans and Mycenaeans. Around 11,000 BC, Pavlo Petri sank to the depths, possibly as a result of a devastating tsunami or deadly earthquake. What makes this discovery even more amazing is that many things are still intact, including roads, tombs, and buildings. So far, it's been determined that the city has an area of over 55,000 square yards, or 50,000 square meters. And who knows, they may find a lot more interesting info in the future. In 2013, Animal Planet came out with a documentary called Mermaids, The New Evidence. This had record-breaking ratings, because they came up with evidence that some kind of mermaid-like creatures live at the bottom of the ocean. Biologist Dr. Paul Robinson went with a small group of people in a submarine to a depth of 900 meters in the Greenland Sea, located between Greenland and Iceland. At one point when they were filming underwater life, a strange hand came out of nowhere against the glass of the submarine, and then it swam away at an incredible speed. The strange thing about this is that a well-known television station is covering this, which therefore makes it believable. According to scientists, the water pressure would be too high to dive here, so it probably wouldn't have been a diver. Still, I'm pretty skeptical about this, but this video did make it on Animal Planet's most watched program with 3.6 million viewers. While a woman was swimming in the river, something suddenly bumped into her, causing her to panic. Her initial thought was that it was a cute manatee. However, she quickly changed her mind upon closer inspection. Manatees are large marine mammals known for their gentle nature and herbivorous diet. Although they are primarily associated with coastal waters, some manatees can also inhabit rivers and freshwater habitats. Manatees are also impressive creatures when it comes to their size. On average, they can reach lengths of 10 to 13 feet, or 3 to 4 meters, and weigh somewhere between 800 to 1200 pounds, or 360 to 550 kilograms. Their bodies have a cylindrical shape with a paddle-like tail. 
which they use for propulsion. Manatees have a pair of small round eyes and often have a very friendly, almost serene expression on their face. Their diet mainly consists of aquatic plants and are not unsuspecting swimmers. The woman was initially startled, but thankfully unharmed. It could have been worse if the creature had been, for example, a giant anaconda snake. To be fair, the vampire fish is not the most dangerous fish in the waters, even despite its unpleasant name. In this video, Jeremy Wade managed to catch a vampire fish. However, it's a smaller specimen, because the fish can grow much larger. In addition, the vampire fish is kind of a piranha with two large sharp teeth on their lower jaw. So you better be careful. Sinkholes are super dangerous, and they're mostly found in landscapes. But in this next video, someone from the US state of Louisiana manages to capture on camera a sinkhole that occurs under the water. It's best to stay as far away from them as possible, because sinkholes can be unpredictable and become miles or kilometers long. In the video, we see a number of trees that are easily dragged into the water. The fact that the man was standing so close is not advisable, because you never know how big and deep a sinkhole can be. Fortunately, the man in this video had survived, and thanks to him, we can see what it looks like when a sinkhole occurs from under the water. Sword fights, protracted hostilities escalating, and last words spoken. All of this unfolded thousands of years ago at this river. A discovery in 1996 in the Tolentz Valley, Germany, revealed a gruesome secret from Europe's Bronze Age. An amateur archaeologist found a single upper arm bone protruding from the steep riverbank leading to the discovery of a significant archaeological site. Upon further examination, archaeologists uncovered more bones, including a smashed skull and a 29-inch or 73-centimeter club resembling a baseball bat. These artifacts, along with other finds like bronze spearheads, flint tools, and bronze arrowheads, have all been radiocarbon dated back to around 1250 BC, suggesting they originated from a single event during the Bronze Age. The site in the Tolens Valley is remarkable due to the large number of remains discovered. So far, at least five horses and over a hundred male remains have been excavated, indicating a large-scale conflict. It's believed there may have been hundreds more unearthed bones, and it's estimated that thousands of people could have been involved in the battle. The legend about the Land's End Night is the most popular on the Sea Island located in the Atlantic Ocean. But it wouldn't be a made-up legend, because when you drive on the road at night on St. Helena Island, you start to think your mind is playing tricks on you. In fact, when it's dark, you see an eerie light over Land's End Road. It looks pretty scary, and many people think it's a ghost of a soldier who had died while patrolling Land End's Road in 1861. It's believed that the light is the soldier trying to find his head, and that's why he carries an old iron lantern to light the road. People who don't believe this story say the light is nothing more than a swamp gas. But the strange thing is that according to some, there is no swamp at all. So what could this light be? What do you think? The Queensland Goliath grouper is a giant fish that you can also find in rivers. In this video, Jeremy Wade manages to catch a huge Goliath grouper with the help of two other men. As we can see from the belly of this fish, it loves food very much. This fish can weigh as much as 880 pounds, or 400 kilograms. Unbelievable, isn't it? A snakehead is not a snake, as the name would suggest, but an unusual fish. It's a freshwater fish with an elongated head that can be compared to a snake. These fish are known to be very aggressive and prey on all life in the water. In some cases, they can wipe out an entire population of other species, including fish, insects, and small amphibians in the area. Scientists found these fish in the Potomac River in the United States and realized that this could become a big problem. Another feature of these fish is that they can breathe outside of the water and can be able to walk on land. So this means that they can cross from one river to another. That's kind of creepy if you ask me. The last thing three divers expected when they were diving on the west coast of Norway was a life-sized blob to emerge. They were originally there to investigate a World War II shipwreck 650 feet or 200 meters from shore. In a video that was uploaded to YouTube, we can see one of the divers swimming with this spherical blob. Now, the question is, what could this thing be? With a flashlight, one of the divers saw hundreds of thousands of tiny spheres. These globules are eggs, which contain baby squid. So this blob could be from a giant squid. The strange thing is that sightings of similar blobs have been reported for about 30 years. But this was the first time a clear video was made of it. 
This video was uploaded on November 11, 2013 by a YouTube user named Captain JRD. It shows footage of marine life at a depth of 1,143 meters in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa. The video is recorded by an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle. They appear to see a strange creature that looks a bit like a crab. But in addition to looking strange, it suddenly transforms into a roundish thing that comes closer to the camera while also appearing to have different lights. The creature is curious about the camera and takes a closer look. In the comments, the people say it might be a rib jellyfish. People are speculating a lot, but it's unclear to this day what exactly this was. At the end, you can see the creature getting tangled up in the bow thrusters of the ROV. Have you ever found something in a river? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.